Ryan Atchison for AutoForge.net. In this video review, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of products from the Koshimi line. The first one is Green Star. A Green Star is Koshimi's all-purpose cleaner. According to the product description, it is a highly concentrated phosphate and solvent-free alkaline universal cleaner. It's universally usable thanks to its enormous dirt and oil carrying capacity. Areas of use are for cars, recreational and commercial vehicles, in the workshop. You can also use it to clean industrial floors that may have a lot of oil or grease on them. So the recommendations of how to use this product, depending on the dirt accumulation, cleaning vehicle exteriors and engines, use a dilution ratio of 1 to 5 all the way up to 1 to 30. It says to apply the product over the whole surface, allow it to react for a short time, and use a high pressure cleaner to rinse off thoroughly. This product can also be used on interior surfaces. Uh, the interior surfaces and textiles, they're recommending that you use a 1 to 10 to 1 to 20 solution ratio. Then obviously you'll want to go back behind that with a damp rag and, and wipe up any residue. So the other product that we're going to be looking at is Koshimi Motoplast. Now Motoplast is kind of an interesting product. Um, what it's for is after you've cleaned your engine or a electric motor, you can use Motoplast to put a preservative on it. And so the product description says that it is a naturally shiny water displacing engine conservator. Treated parts regain their new appearance. The plower units are protected from corrosion and environmental factors by a permanently elastic protective film. Recommendations for use. Use a spray bottle. Apply an even thin film to a wet or dry clean surface. So what I've got here, I've got a motor on this uh, Honda Civic that's probably never been cleaned in its life so we're going to try out both of these products and get this engine all cleaned up and I'll show you just how well these products work so let me swing you around and I'll show you what we're going to be working with alright so here's the engine I'm going to be cleaning up as you can see it's it's quite dirty um, just about every place you look it is covered in dirt. So we'll get the underside of the hood all cleaned up. Get this all clean. Looking nice. So I think this is going to be a pretty good challenge for these products to see just how well they do work. So what I've got going on here, I've got uh, my Carolina detailing cart. Uh, for a bucket, I'm using my wheel bucket. This is the bucket that I use anytime I'm cleaning wheels. Um, definitely do not want to clean an engine that's dirty like that with your bucket that you normally wash the car with. You don't want all that grit and grime in your bucket. In my IK Foam Pro 2 Plus, which is the one that has the Schrader valve so I don't have to pump it up, I've got the Green Star in there at a 1 to 5 ratio. So I've got 15 ounces of water in there, so I've got 3 ounces of the all-purpose cleaner. To get down into the nooks and crannies where the foam's not going to get, I've also got it in a IK spray bottle, same ratio, 1 to 5. I've got 15 ounces of water, 3 ounces of product. To clean everything off, I'm going to be using a power washer. I've also got the wide tip on it, so it's not a real concentrated uh, jet of water. There's a lot of controversy as to whether or not you should use a pressure washer. I've cleaned hundreds of 
engines on cars using the same method, never had a problem. For brushes to get down in all the areas, I've got a multiple brushes that I'll be using. I'll be using the Wheel Woolies Boar's Hair Brush, some of the easy detail brushes, the big one and the small one to get down in between things. I'm going to be using some detail brushes. So let's get this thing foamed up and spray some cleaner down in the tight areas like back in there that I know the foam's not going to get to and get this thing all cleaned up. So here we go. Um, off camera I went ahead and loosely covered up the alternator with a plastic bag. Uh, some people do it, some people don't. Uh, it's totally up to you. You know, I've never, never had an issue where I've had an alternator you know, have a problem from getting sprayed, but your mileage may vary, so I'll leave that up to you as to whether or not you want to do that. So I'm going to start off with the Green Star and a spray bottle so I can get way back up in there. I know the foam's not going to reach all the way back in there. So we'll go ahead and get those areas Soaking, give the product a chance to work. And that's actually a very important thing to do, and that is, you know, give the give the product a chance to, to do what it needs to do. You know, a lot of times when products don't seem to work like they should, it's typically because you know, people aren't giving the product a chance to do what it's designed to do. So, All right, so now that I've got everything soaking with the sprayer, we'll go ahead and foam everything else. Got that all looking pretty good. Go ahead and foam the underside of the hood. You can see the IK foamer does an excellent job of foaming up the product. And the benefit of using a foam in your pre-soak is that once the foam is on there and it's dwelling on whatever you're trying to clean, every time one of those little bubbles pops, it introduces new fresh cleaner onto the surface. Whereas a spray bottle, typically spray it on there and it hits the area and runs off and really doesn't have hardly any type of a dwell time to it. So I'm going to put you back up on the stand and get to work with my brushes and get this cleaned up. So for all the big flat areas I'm going to use my Will Woolies 9 inch boar's hair brush. It's a very soft brush. Don't have to worry about it scratching anything. It's safe for your paint, um, works really well on wheels, especially if you've got gloss black wheels. But you have to be extremely careful that you don't scratch the face of those when you're cleaning them. Excellent, excellent brush. You can see the bristles are very, very soft. So we'll go along and hit all the big flat areas with this.
and then to get down into the tight areas I'll use my easy de detail brush same same brush you use on wheels you can use to clean the engine compartment works nice for getting down into the areas that you can you can look at but you can't touch them And for uh, even smaller tire areas, we used a mini detail, easy detail brush. And these brushes can also be bent, so if you need to work around something, just give it a bend and stick it down in there where it needs to go. smaller areas here. Gonna put a little bit more cleaner back on. It's pretty dirty around these coil packs and on top of the cam cover. The good thing about cleaning the engine on your car is one, if you ever have to do anything to it, it makes it a lot nicer and not getting your hands absolutely filthy anytime you touch anything underneath the hood. Uh, but the second thing that's probably more important, once you've got everything all cleaned up and taken care of and looking good anytime you know you should have a problem down the road with an oil leak or something you know antifreeze leak or anything like that it's going to be very easy to pinpoint where it's coming from because that the all the surfaces are nice and clean and you'll see a nice trail you know where the oil or antifreeze or what power steering fluid whatever is running out of versus if everything underneath the hood is totally covered in oil and dirt and grime you know you're kind of kind of chasing your tail a little bit to try to identify a problem so other than just looking good there's a mechanical reason behind doing it also so let's go ahead and get this rinsed off helps to turn on the power washer This may work a little bit better. Now 
Now this car happens to have a sound dampening pad underneath the hood. Um, if you're going to use a power washer to clean your engine, be pretty careful with these. Um, you know, they're kind of a thick fabric, but they're not real durable. So don't take your pressure wash and get right on it trying to blast the dirt out of it because you'll end up damaging it more so than cleaning it. So really to clean it, just put a little bit of cleaner on there. Take a nice soft brush, like the Wheel Woolies brush, and just give it a light, light brush. Don't, don't scrub on it. And then when you rinse it off, rinse it off from the distance away so you're not concentrating a bunch of water pressure on it. All right, so it looks pretty good. Let me take you in and I'll show you how well it cleaned everything up. You can see everything, everything looks pretty good. Obviously the proof of how well it actually did will be once all these surfaces are dry to where we can see if it actually removed all the dirt. So let me get this thing all dried up, uh, blow all the water out of it. I'm going to be using my McKee's 37 mini car dryer. So let me blow all this excess water off of here and I'll bring you back and show you what the dried up engine compartment looks like before we apply the motoplast. So I'll be right back. So as you can see, the Green Star did an excellent, excellent job of cleaning up this engine compartment. Just a little bit of agitation with a brush, rinse it off. Got down in all the nooks and crannies, 
all of this area that was just covered in dirt. Looks good. The uh, sound insulation on the hood came out nice and clean. Still dripping some water, but the best best way to dry those out is simply leave the hood up just like I've got it. All the water will drain down to the bottom and drip out and a matter of an hour or so, it'll be nice and dry. So that looks good. So now we'll move on to the Koshimi Motoplast and take a look at that product. So according to the directions, it says to apply a nice even thin film. So we'll turn the sprayer on. Lightly mist the product on. As you can see, it's got kind of a white look to it, so it's easy to see where you've sprayed it. Like I said in the opening of the video, you can apply this directly to a wet engine. So if you don't want to dry it or you don't have a way to dry it like I did with my uh, mini car dryer, you can simply mist it onto the wet engine compartment, close the hood and let it dry. So we've got everything nicely covered we'll turn some fans on it to help speed up the drying process and I'll bring you back and show you the finished product so far everything's looking great all right so here's the finished product the motor plast is had a chance to dry. Looks good. All the hoses look nice and black. Uh, all the wiring on the wiring loom is nice and clean. Connectors, everything look good. Air filter housing, all of it. Fuse box, everything. Everything looks great. So what I would recommend that you do once everything's had a chance to dry, come back behind with a, an old microfiber towel and just kind of wipe it up just a little bit. You might have a couple of spots that are a little shinier than a, another spot, so just take your towel and kind of wipe off the excess if you have any. The product dries to the touch. Uh, it is not it's not greasy at all, uh, so I don't think it's going to attract any dirt or what dirt does land on it. I don't think it's going to stick to it like, you know, a lot of times people try to use tire shines and that type of product in their engine compartment. And, you know, it may look good for two weeks, but a month down the road, everything is just covered in dirt because every little bit of dust that gets in there just sticks to it. But this product is... Definitely not slippery. Like I said, it's dry to the touch. Uh, absolutely nothing on my fingers. So excellent, excellent product. Looks great. Very, very happy with this job. So that was Koshimi. Green Star and Motorplast. I hope you found the video informative. If you did, please like and subscribe. I know it was a little bit of a longer video, but uh, this car's got 85,000 miles on it and it basically lived on a dirt road. So it had years of dirt built up in there. So it wasn't a quick and easy job to do but going forward from this point now that I've got everything nice and clean and shined up and all that kind of stuff maintaining this is going to be very very simple so 
If you'd like to learn any more information on Koshimi products, please visit autoforge.net. We sell a wide variety of Koshimi products. This is Ron Atchison. Thanks for watching.